Oh, hi. Hey. Uh, now let's have a look at the problem 2297, jump game 8. So for this problem, we're going to share a dynamic programming solution with monotonic stacks. So this is a very interesting problem. So first I'll go through the statement of the problem and then analyze the assumptions. And then we will explain the method and uh, the intuition. And finally, we write the code. And uh, yeah, so we will also suggest some related questions. And also, we append a detailed walkthrough of the algorithms through example. So it's also encouraged to have a look. So now let's look at the statement of the problem. So we are given a zero indexed integer array called nums of length m. So we are initially starting at index zero. So we can understand this as position. So we can jump from the index i to index g, where i is less than g if uh, two of the possibilities. So first is nums i is less or equal than uh, nums g. And in between, all the numbers is uh, strictly less than nums i. So this is one case. In other words, we can jump to a, a higher or equal index if in between is uh, all um, lower. So the second one is that if nums i is greater than nums g, and uh, all the numbers in between are greater or equal than nums i. In other words, we can jump down if in between are all on here. So this is the second case. So as we will see, the first case actually corresponds to a decreasing stack. And the second case corresponds to an increasing stack. So with this key point mentioned, so let's look at uh, the following parts. So we are also given an integer array called costs of length m, where costs i denotes the cost of jumping to index i or position i. So this problem requires to return the minimum cost to the uh, to jump to the index m minus one. In other words, jump to the end of the array. So here is um, an example. So in order to jump from the very beginning to the end, the minimum cost is eight. So here uh, is an explanation. So we will, um, actually our walkthrough is exactly for this problem. So we will not uh, go um, details here further. So for this one, so the total um, cost, minimal cost is two. So that's about example two. So now let's look at the constraints. So the constraint is that n is the length of nums and costs, so they are equal. And n is greater or equal than 1. That, that is a valid assumption. And it can be up to 10 to the power uh, fifth, means that we couldn't uh, just uh, use pure brute force for this problem. And the last constraint is about the range of elements in nums and in costs. So which also is greater or equal than zero and less or equal than 10 to the power of fifth. So uh, the, the, the second one is more essential when we write the code. We need to keep up this in mind. So with that said, uh, let's look at the method. So the method we are going to use um, is dynamic program. So with the help of monotonic stacks, I would say stacks, we use two stacks, one decreasing stack, one Mm, increasing stack corresponding to the two rows of jump. So the intuition is as follows. So uh, first we define this DPI as the minimum cost to jump to position I. We are going to use the help of the monotonic stacks to help update this DP table. So for case one jump, in other words, this first item here. So basically how do we uh, treat that, so we'll maintain a decreasing stack before current num. num. So for example, let's look at these uh, numbers, 10, 6, 
four, and two. And then the current number, let's assume, is greater or equal than ten, some number. So then we each pop. So pop, we get a two. So it means from number two, we can jump to this uh, current number. And then we continue uh, jump uh, pop, we get a four. It means from four, we can jump to this number. Because in, in between, we are maintaining a decreasing stack. It automatically satisfies the condition of the first item. So similarly, we can have six. Six can jump to this current number, also 10. So this is for the first case. Um, for the second case jump, we are going to maintain an increasing stack before current number. For example, 10, 10, uh, 13, and 15. So we allow equal because this assumption, nums k greater or equal than nums i. So let's see the current number is none, which means uh, it's corresponding to this nums i greater than nums j strictly. So then we can pop. If we pop this 15, it means from this number 15, we can jump to none. And from this 13, we can jump to none because 13 is greater than none and 15 is greater than 13. Right, so that's the exact suit for treating the second case jump. So um, that's basically the intuition for treating the two uh, rules of jump. So here I want to make a, a remark. So we actually essentially treat the numbers, but in practice we need to store indices in the stacks. So in the stacks, decreasing stack and increasing stack. So um, now I guess we are in a position to write the code. Uh, before we do that, here are some recommendations. So uh, actually we can try problem uh, 1944 or problem 2282 for um, uh, using same um, technique. So there, these two problems, we can use decreasing stack to treat that well. So uh, here is a walkthrough of the examples using the above uh, method or idea or intuition. So we will not uh, go through at the present time. Let's first look at the code. And the code actually speaks uh, itself, but uh, it's good to have this uh, walkthrough. <laughs> okay, now let's uh, let's look at the code. Um, for this, um, first I'll do some uh, preparations. Let's make some preparation. Uh, for this purpose, what we want to do uh, is that um, I will first uh, initialize a DP table. So, because we are going to compute the minimum, so I'm um, initialized by a very large number. Let's use infinity. So here um, I will call this it should be length of nums. And then, because the assumption is that we are initially at uh, uh, zero, right? So at index zero by the problem statement, so we as set dp zero is zero. So um, also we need to um, initialize two stacks to keep uh, the tools for us to update the dp table. So here I'm going to use stack increasing and stack uh, decreasing. So um, the they both uh, store indices or uh, maintain a monotone stack uh, before current uh, index, index i. We're going to uh, look. So with that said, um, let's, mm, let's do the second step. That's the case step. That is update uh, the DP table. So here we are going to traverse this um, nums list. So basically it's for i num in enumerate num. So what we want to do is that if we check uh, which kind of jump we can do. So uh, uh, first let's check the decreasing stack for type 1 jump. Well stack decreasing. So if the, this stack is not empty and num, so let's use this assumption, num is greater or equal than the current height, mm, height number. So you can understand as height. So stack decreasing uh, negative one, right? 
So if this is the case, we're going to do the pop and then update the DP table. We're going to update DP table I. So we're going to, how do we update? Because we are going to make minimum the original one, original value, plus um, the position, the DP at position uh, stack dick pop. Then this is the initial state. It means that we can jump from this position to current position with the costs i. So that's one case. So another case is that we're going to check stack increasing. And for this case, we're required that the current number is strictly less than nums i. So nums i um, strictly less than the top of the uh, stack. So the stack inc increasing uh, negative one. So if this is the case, we do the same update. But let's copy this. Uh, let's change the name of the stack. So here stack is inc. We do the pop and we cost uh, we add the cost. So notice that in the process we have already did the pop. So the st the stack state in here or here actually is changing, right? So these two uh, while loop in at each index uh, we only enter one because these two condition nums greater or equal than the uh, the number corresponding to the stack height. Uh, this is the one case greater or equal or less. So in this case, corresponding to uh, jump tap one. So in this case, it corresponds to, to jump tap two. So with that said, um, at each of the um, end of this uh, uh, while loop, we're going to push the current index into the um, stack in order for the following uh, updates. When we look at the new numbers, so what we are going to do is that we stack decreasing. So we append this current index. Similarly for stack uh, increasing, we are adding this one. So actually, you know, at the last index, because there is no right element, we do not do anything. So uh, that's why this actually all the work we need to do. So finally, we are going to return the result. What we are going to return is actually uh, dp minus one. So the last index. So with that said, uh, let's do some check. And so let's. So this passes the first uh, example. And uh, actually, you know, we can also um, print out the uh, the state of each uh, uh, after each uh, iteration. So let's do some print. Print uh, index so i and uh, stack decreasing stack decreasing and uh, stack inc. So also I guess we uh, we also can print the DP state. Hmm, DP. So let's have a look for this problem. Yeah, so basically, this is the final stage 0, 7, 6, 10, 8, right? So we're going to return 8. So for this example, so here is a detailed walkthrough for every detail. So for example, uh, this is the initialization the index nums cost dp at initial stage the initial stage of uh, the stacks and then after step one step two step three step four and step five and finally we get uh, the result so it's good to uh, have a walk through so that we again uh, genuine experience or understanding about this uh, typical problem so with that said, uh, let's um, let's also test um, test another one, the example two. 
so that we can understand why it rep uh, returns two. So the cost is one one one. So this is the final state of the DP. So zero. If we want to jump to index one, we're going to the minimum cost is one, and if we want to jump to the last index, the minimal cost is two. So that's about it. So let's comment out this print, and then we do the check for generic case. Let's submit. Yeah, it passes the generic case. Yeah. Um, let me su quickly summarize the video. So first, we walk through the statement of the problem, and then we uh, look at the method and the intuition corresponding to the two jump taps. So one jump, the first tap corresponding to a decreasing stack, and the second jump corresponding to an increasing uh, stack. Then we uh, wrote the code and test the cases. Uh, the code was in um, three parts. One is preparation, one is update the table, the main work, and finally we return the last element in the DP table. So that's <laughs> a solution for this problem. So uh, welcome for comments and other solutions. Thank you very much.